Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Today we are using this sketch, which is an 8.5 by 11 size sketch for our Stretch the Sketch Challenge. And normally we start with a 12 by 12, but uh, we're starting with an 8.5 by 11. So I wanted to do something a little bit different for me, and that is work with an 8 by 8 size layout. Um, this is not something that I typically do. I think I have made maybe, I don't know, maybe seven layouts or eight layouts in this particular size. But I thought it would be perfect um, as the follow-on to last week's video of the Christmas pages that I made using the Mint Wishes paper from Kaiser Craft. So this paper I am using... Um, from Kaiser Craft is going to just be a little bit of an it's going to be an, an insert but not in between the double page layout it'll be an, the next page um, and I just wanted to focus on this photo of my son opening up this quilt that I had made him I've never quilted before I had a friend growing up and her mom was a quilter and she lived just down the street so I got together with her and had told her that I wanted to make a quilt for my kids uh, one for each of them and so she helped me whip these out pretty quickly. Um, I think I I got this crazy idea to make this these two quilts maybe a week before Christmas. And um, so we went with a really s simple pattern. And um, she helped me out with that. And it worked out really well. My kids love their quilts. My son still uses his on his bed um, to this day. And this was probably... Um, let's see, I think these are from 2006. Anyway, so they're quite old uh, photos. But this is just a picture of him with a big old smile on his face. And so I wanted to document it that I kind of had a crazy idea and it actually worked out. So as you can see, the sketch called for two photos in, I think it's two and a half by three and a half. And I ended up going with a 4 by 6 photo and then I trimmed it down to be let's see her I'm gonna measure it for you right now because I actually don't know how big it is it is mm, three and a quarter by four and three quarters so I trimmed it down considerably I wanted it to fit on the page um, and be smaller rather than as overpowering as a 4x6 would fit on this page. So in the sketch there are um, there's a tag hanging down at the bottom and so I wanted to go ahead and use two different tags and I am using the back side of that um, triangular paper that I used as the background. I'm going to use that as one of my tags and I think this is actually the tag die that came with this Tim Holtz sidekick. So it, it also comes with a little um, circle reinforcer for the tag. So I went ahead and used both of those and then I'm going to use another tag die uh, to make another to make a smaller one. And that tag die I think hmm you know I, I actually don't even know where I got the the second tag die it came in a little set so you'll see me put that together here I don't actually need the whole thing and so I snip it off and just have the top of it hanging out because I've already adhered my photo onto the mats and my mats onto the background of the layout now also in the sketch there are a bunch of speech bubbles down the left hand side and I don't want to use speech bubbles on this layout so I decide that I'm going to use some stickers from the Mint Wishes sticker sheet and they are ornaments. So I'm going to have ornaments hanging down the left hand side um, and creating a border on the photo. And one of them is going to cover up a little bit of the photo. It's not a big deal. That, that side of the photo is pretty dark. You can't really see the people in it and I really want the focus to be on my son who is in the lower right hand corner. So I don't mind that it's actually um, covering up a little bit of what's going on in the photo. So there are my 
ornaments and I'm going to pop those up onto foam tape. I did pop up, um, actually I'm going to move the entire photograph and tags up a little bit because by the time I add the tags they're down a little bit low for what I like. So I'm going to pop everything up in just a few seconds here and move them up a little bit and you're going to see that on cam um, I, I don't think I cut that out but I may have. Anyway, I'm just using some brown baker's twine. One of them I am just looping through the tag. The other one I'm actually creating a little bow in and I've used a little bit of that tonic glue and that is their Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive glue. It's clear drying and I just put a little bit on my between my fingers and roll the edge of the baker's twine so that it won't unravel when it's in the album. I'm just using some fun foam to go ahead and pop up these um, ornaments. And I know that I want my ornaments to pop out a little bit and actually my tags also. So I have been inking everything with walnut stain. You see that on my desk there in the uh, um, top portion of the screen. And that's probably one of my favorite inks to use is walnut stain. I also use black soot a lot. Um, I don't put a ton on. It just creates a little bit of depth and uh, makes everything stand out just a little bit more than if I had not put any of the ink on it at all. So um, this fun foam you can see I've already punched letters out of it with my old red Sizzix machine and I used those in a different project. So I'm just using the leftover bits and pieces of it to pop everything up. This fun foam goes quite a ways and it's really super cheap. I think I got it at Walmart. Um, pretty much have things where I want it on the layout. Everything just needs to be adhered down and I do decide that I am going to do some hand stitching to have these um, ornaments hang from the hand stitching and I'm going to show you the thread here in a minute. It's a metallic thread. I went ahead and split it out so that it's three strands for the stitching because it's quite thick and it's a little bit awkward to work with because of the metallic shine to it. It doesn't stay together really well even if you, um, even if I roll <laughs> the end of it in the glue on between my fingers, it still does not stay. Uh, you can see I've put my little foam mouse pad there and I'm getting out my ruler using my Amy Tangerine piercing tool and piercing um, the marks as to where I want to put the stitching. And I am going to have to move over the top ornament just a little bit to the left because as they sit right now, they it's directly in line with the brown one at the bottom. And so the stitching, uh, you would only see one line of stitching because they're lined up so perfectly. So I went ahead and moved that a little bit over to the left so that there are two lines of stitching. And I'm not going to do all of the stitching online. There's the metallic embossing, not embossing, <laughs> embroidery thread floss. Um, and so I went ahead and used that. And then I'm not going to make you sit through watching all of that on screen. I think I do show you just a little bit of it here. And then at the top of each ornament, I am going to put a flat backed jewel. Um, just to give it a little bit of bling and then I will put a couple more of those down in the bottom right hand corner by the tags. And I do have some 8x8 sheet protectors that will work for this but if I didn't I would just go ahead and cut up a 12x12. 12 12. I do have a fuse tool that would work as well but in the event that you don't have a fuse tool you can actually run those through your sewing machine and stitch them to be smaller. Um, you could also use washi tape I suppose to close the edge of it up. Um, so there's quite a few options uh, that, and that's if you don't have some 8x8 sheet protectors. Um, but since I have those it's not a problem for me. I keep various sizes of sheet protectors on hand because I do like my albums to have a lot of variation in the page sizes. Um, I don't mind it being a lot of 12 by 12s, but I do like 
to have some different interests in having eight by eights or I'm um, more frequently I use a six by twelve. So anyway, that's that's my plan for this particular page. I have not yet figured out what I'm going to put on the back of it, but I'm sure I will figure out something at some point. A lot of times I will just do a personality page about my my one of my kids or maybe a pet or something like that on the back. Um, it, because those don't have to go in any particular chronological order. And I do keep my albums chronologically, even though I don't scrap completely chronologically. This is our monthly installment of this Stretch to Sketch video hop. Go ahead and check out all of the other fantastic, amazing, and talented ladies that are listed down below to see how they have either made this sketch larger or smaller for their own purposes. If you've enjoyed this video, give me a like and a subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Stick around for the close-ups. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.